Okay, this is uh, Ted Flett with the Blade Boys, and I'm quite excited to be joined here with esteemed Olympic and world champion producing figure skating coach, Frank Carroll. It's nice to be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my first memory, Frank, of, uh, of, of yourself, and, and I think many skating fans will share this, at least you first sort of arrived on my radar, my knowledge in 1996 when you coached Michelle Kwan to the world championship in, uh, in Edmonton and then the following year I actually had the opportunity to see you coach uh, live in flesh when I attended the 1997 champion series final you were coaching again Michelle Kwan mm -hmm. in her first season after winning uh, a world title and we all bought our tickets expecting that this would be another coronation uh, of a glorious skater uh, but that changed quite dramatically just a couple weeks before the event when uh, Tara Lipinski outskated her at the national championships. And then Michelle Kwan arrived in, at the time, Hamilton, Ontario, uh, and was really struggling with, for example, amongst other things, the Lux. She was spending a lot of time with you in, at the boards in the corner trying to visualize that jump. Uh, I mean, we're going back decades now, but do you remember that? Do you remember the event? Do you remember the, the struggle yes, that I she do. had? Yes, I do. I remember okay. the frustration of the event. Okay. Right. Michelle was skating on really terrible, terrible equipment. Uh, she had put on Rydell boots, which are not bad boots, and, and, and you know, the company is good. Mm -hmm. But the blade became twisted on the boot, torqued, and the blade was set wrong, and it was on a terrible angle. And every time she came down to land, she would fall down because she was so in the circle. Mm -hmm. And when she went to do a triple loop, she was so far in the circle, she would fall down. And when she went to do triple toe, double toe in, in her nationals that she lost, she was so in the circle. But I was not permitted to fix the equipment, and that was a parental problem with, with Mr. Kwan, who insisted not to change the equipment at that point. Mm. And uh, it wasn't until after she lost the world championship in Switzerland that he finally agreed that there was something wrong. Okay. It's very funny because years later, when Michelle put those boots back on because of a problem with other things and she needed to wear a pair of boots, you know, just to practice, yep. she said to her dad, are you kidding me? You let me wear this pair of skates with my foot over like that? And so she realized that uh, that was basically the problem. And then that whole year she had equipment problems. Right. Hindsight 2020. Yeah. You're here coaching three skaters. Mm -hmm. And in the women's event, you're coaching uh, Gracie Gold. In the in some of the practices, Gracie has had, a, you know, as I think is fairly common in practices, a couple of problems here and there with for example, the Lutz, which is a real money jump for her. You work with her to get her, obviously, in the mindset to, to land that jump in competition, which she did in the short program. What is the magic touch that you have on your skaters to, to, to put them at a sense of ease and so that they can deliver the, the big jump in the count? Well, I think I try to keep them calm and not be hysterical over you know, problems that are occurring at the moment. Okay. I think that uh, Gracie's biggest problem is she becomes very stiff um, at times when she's anxious and doesn't bend her knees and then you know in order to do a triple left you've got to bend before you spring and if she pops it she's like very stiff like a penguin mm -hmm. and so I have to keep reminding her to bend her knees and jump and um, you know she's a very um, excitable girl you know and she she has a lot of emotions and to keep those in check and just do the job mm -hmm. has has been a lot of my work is mm -hmm. to keep her in control emotionally okay is it, is it tougher or is there a different dynamic knowing that the world champion is in the mix uh, does do other skaters affect Gracie in terms of her practice and her mindset oh no I don't think so at all I think any any great skater on this level is interested strictly in what they're doing and how they do it and it would be just absolute disaster if they started to think about other people I, mm. I mean I never let Michelle Kwan ever watch anybody mm. I don't let my skaters watch other people I just wants them to think about what they're doing, okay. do what they're doing well, and see how the chips fall at the end. Mm -hmm. But you can't you can't get involved with what other people are doing. Okay. It's a disaster. And how about you? Are you ever, you know, does your eye ever wander and, and notice? Oh, I know everything that's that going from? on. Okay. But I, I don't really tell my skaters at all what's going on. I mean, 
I mean, it's my job to be on top of what's happening in the skating world and who's mm -hmm. doing what and mm -hmm. who's got what and what program. But if your skater isn't capable of doing something that's a difficult thing that someone else is doing, why would you tell them about it? Okay. That it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, I, of course it's my job to know what's going on. Okay. Uh, Gracie was pretty vocal uh, recently at saying that her goal is to win worlds in Boston on home soil. How do you feel about uh, a goal like that? Do you think that's do you think that's too lofty? How do you feel about her, you know, proclaiming that and sharing that? Well, I, I think um, I would not have made that statement. I, I think that may be her wish. It is going to be in Boston, where she spent a lot of time in her childhood, mm -hmm. and and I think it's great to have you know. I mean, it's great for everybody to dream about making the Olympics. So we have to have goals. We have to have dreams. Mm -hmm. So if that is her dream to do that, there's nothing wrong with that. I just wouldn't probably be so vocal about it. I would be more, you know, containing it within my own thoughts. Okay. Do you think it, it sort of helps, uh, I guess, crystallize her mindset around that particular goal? Or do you think it sends a message to other skaters that, okay, Gracie Gold is, you know, she means business this season? Well, I think it, it mentally it puts a little more pressure on her herself. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, she's made that statement. Now, how does she go about uh, getting that to happen? You know, is she going to be disappointed if it doesn't happen? You know, if she uh, doesn't make the world team that year and doesn't even get to Boston? You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that to me is uh, a disappointing uh, result of maybe your statement. So okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't make that statement. So I take it she didn't clear this with you. No, I mean, why would she? I mean, you know, I, I certainly don't brainwash my skaters. Right. You know, I, I want them to be intelligent, vocal people that have, you know, a good mind and, and are, you know, willing to speak intelligently. And okay. if that's the way she felt, that's the way she felt. Mm -hmm. It just necessarily is not something I would advise her to say. Okay. Her programs this year are, uh, have made a real statement. She's got an incredibly strong short program, skated it you know, very well here at uh, Trophée Eric Lampard. She has an excellent free skate uh, set to Firebird that she skated uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I guess, in Skate America that brought the house down. How do you feel about th these two vehicles to help, uh, you know, help her to excel this season? Well, I think that Lori Nichols did a brilliant job. And of course, I think she's the best choreographer for the ice in the world. And uh, I think they're exceptional. And I think they're perfect for Gracie because they bring out um, a different side of her. Mm -hmm. I think she's able to lose herself in these roles. When, when she's the tango dancer, I don't think she thinks about being Gracie Gold. I think she thinks about being the tango dancer. And she, when she does the Firebird, I think she thinks, I have a role to portray here. I have got to be this fictional you know, thing in history and in, in uh, ballet and then I have to perform it in that, that venue and so I think that she gets out of herself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She's quite close now to qualifying for the Grand Prix final, uh, which would be the first final for her. No, she qualified last year. Sorry, but didn't attend. Yes. Right. Right. Um, the, if, if memory serves me, I think the last time you were at the Grand Prix final would have been with Evan Lysacek in yes, 2010. Yeah. So it's been a while for you to be at, at the final. Are you excited or are you looking forward to the possibility of qualifying and attending? Not particularly. Okay. It's, it's, it's not, <laughs> You're not looking for a trip to Spain? No, I, I love Barcelona and I've been there a number of times for my own pleasure and I like it very much but I always feel the series final is kind of, well what does it mean? You know, you've skated in the Grand Prix, this is the series final, there's only six people and the world championship is coming in. I kind of, you know, personally feel it's kind of a superfluous, hmm. okay. you know, competition. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, so I think it's made for TV, only by the IRSU for TV, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'm speaking out of turn, but that's the way I feel. Okay, well, that, that's what we're looking for. That's how you feel. <laughs> um, there's been much made about a potential, not a potential, a rivalry between Gracie Gold and the other top American skater, lady skater, uh, Ashley Wagner. Mm -hmm. What are your observations about this particular comparison or this particular rivalry, if you want to call it that, which, you know, the U.S. lady skating is known for these sorts of storylines. Tara and Michelle uh, back in the 90s, Tara and Sasha uh, later in, in Michelle's career. Um, sorry, Michelle and Sasha, rather. Uh, 
thoughts on, on Ashley and, and Gracie, and is this a lot of sort of media hype? Well, I think it is because they're both terribly nice girls, and um, they, they, they're very nice to each other, you know what okay. I mean? And they appreciate what each other do. I, I think uh, Ashley's a very tough girl. I, I don't think they skate similarly. I think they have entirely different styles. But I think when Ashley gets out on the ice, she really goes for it. She's a very tough cookie. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that uh, Gracie is a very artistic girl and, um, you know, beautiful to music. So the styles are different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, they're both very good. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it depends on who on the day skates. Okay. You know, but they're very close, I mean, you know, in in uh, comparison. They sure are. I mean, it's, they're often one and two at nationals. Yeah. They're often, you know, back to back at, at Worlds and, and other events like the Japan Open earlier this year and the mm -hmm. World Championships last year in Shanghai. It's, it's quite neck and neck. Yes, yes it is. And they're, you know, they're, it's good. It's always good for skating when there's people that are close, but um, they're, they're not um, antagonistic towards each other at all. Okay, okay. Good to know. Uh, one of Ashley's strengths last year in her free skate was that she saves a lot of her jumps for the back half of the program and then capitalizes on uh, additional points. We've noticed this year that, for example, Gracie Gold is now attempting the double axle triple toe after the, the halfway point. Is that, you know, is that Gracie's attempt? Is that your attempt at ensuring that, you know, she's putting her best foot forward and maximizing points against Ashley? I think no. That, that's not accurate. I think, for one thing, musicality has a lot to do with what we do. I mean, if the music doesn't call for putting jumps all in the end of your program, what are you doing? I mean, then your program component scores should reflect that you're not very artistic. I think the music tells you what to do, and if you have to do it more in the opening part of the program, then if the music requires that, that should be the way it should be. I mean, I don't get this loading the second half of the program. Uh, you know, the ISU has done a lot with the rules for free skating, which I think are absurd, and this is probably one of them. You know, yes, you, you should do jumps in the second half of your program so that you show stamina and the ability to really train and have stamina. Mm -hmm. That's great, but you should be able to recognize that as a judge when you're holding up the program component scores. Wait a minute, this girl didn't have any jumps in the end of her program at all. That's not program component score. Mm. You know, that should mm -hmm. be reflected. Why do you have to make it a rule that after the halfway mark you get added whatever? Okay. You know what I mean? There's all this stuff where the free skating program is not free anymore. Mm. It's, we have all these rules and regulations, so it should be called the second uh, required program. Okay. But not the free program. Okay. <laughs> There's nothing free about it, right? It's, it's not just the Gracie Show, because you're also here with uh, two other of your uh, pupils, uh, Daisuke uh, Murakami. Thank you. <laughs> I had a brain freeze there. And Dennis Ten from, uh, from Kazakhstan. Right. Two different skaters at also very different stages in their careers. Let's talk first about, um, about Dennis. This is a skater that uh, is often a slow season starter, uh, really builds towards the end of the season. Um, you know, I even wonder if he's that concerned about the Grand Prix series, frankly, because he knows that he doesn't necessarily need it. Well, I think Dennis um, has problems with his body. His feet aren't level, and equipment is always a problem to get comfortable in the equipment. So when he puts it on, he's always fiddling with it. This year, he's had severe injuries. Mm. So he's skating this competition injured, just like he did Skate America. So we're hoping that these injuries will you know, subside and that he will be in better shape. So right now, he's struggling, but he's in good enough shape to skate here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you know, we don't have high expectations, particularly of the outcome, but he's here to try. Okay. And with Dice Murakami, he, he's a good boy. He is a very quiet boy. He does what he's told. Old, he trains well, and he is um, very consistent, and uh, you know can get through his program very well. And so it's exciting for him to be here and to have done well in uh, Canada. You know, coming third behind a world champion and an Olympic champion. Sure. You know, so 
you know, he, he's doing well, and I'm very happy for him because he's a hard worker. Mm -hmm. There's a much different dynamic for the Japanese skaters in terms of the amount of media interest and the fan interest, no matter where they are, whether they skate, it seems, in Japan or, or elsewhere. It, are, you, are you familiar with that? Is that? Oh my god, I mean, you have no idea what I go through. I, <laughs> I, probably, does, does. I have, probably have every single week a request from uh, Fuji Television or this NHK Television or this network or this TV show or whatever for interviews of my time and with Dice uh, to talk about skating and it's it, after a while it becomes tedious because you think like I have to work I mean you know, I have to <laughs> spend time with my skaters and but they're very persistent in in wanting interviews and television interviews and I think they have to fill up the television time that's in and of course the interest in skating in, J in Japan is huge yeah, yeah so yeah I'm I'm used to that in fighting my way through the TV cameras when you're trying to get to the boards of worlds <laughs> you know I mean it, it's they have more television cameras than God <laughs> right. um, and how does this affect ice skate? no 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 he's you know dice as I say minds his own business he's a very Private, quiet boy, just does his job. I don't think anything sort of phases him. Okay. You know, he's just a straight ahead, this is what I have to do. Okay. This has been a real pleasure hearing your <laughs> thoughts on your skaters and, and on the, the judging system. So thanks so much for taking the oh, time. Oh, my pleasure. We won't, well, oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Right. Right. Here. We right. won't bombard you with uh, multiple interviews over the course of the season, but a weekly update would actually be quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. So thanks so much for watching this episode. If you want to see more uh, interviews like this, feel free to like us and subscribe. Uh, if you don't like the interview, comment such, but nothing against Frank. Make it about me. <laughs> and uh, Or check out goldenskate.com for also excellent figure skating coverage and news and the always entertaining discussion boards. Thanks so much for watching.